If you're thinking about buying an M4 Mac Mini, there are several mistakes you could make. Confession time. This is the second time I've shot this video. The first one I had to delete for two reasons. The first reason is that there was a really annoying audio issue that we couldn't get rid of. The second reason is because it was just horrendous because I got so lost in all the numbers, the specs, the pricing, and that illustrates the issue that you might be having quite neatly, I think. I think if you're trying to buy any kind of Mac, be it a Mac Mini or a, an iMac or a MacBook Pro, etc., there are just so many options for cores and memory and storage and Ethernet and all this stuff, and it's very confusing, very, very confusing. Ironically, it turns out that buying an M4 Mac Mini is actually quite straightforward, because when I strip back all of my advice, all of it, it all comes down to one particular spec, which I think suits most people. I'll get to that, obviously, at the end of this video, but we need to get there first. So what we're gonna do in this video now is rather than me sit here and waffle on about cores and you know, reel off all the specs, we'll do some of that stuff as kind of graphics down here. Niall, who edits these, videos will make that look very nice. What I'll do is just tell you the basics about each element of buying a Mac Mini. And yes, I've done a buying guide already, and yes, there's loads of buying guides out there already, but I've been using this now for the last the last couple of months, I think it is, and it's, it's my daily machine. I've learned so much about the M4 Mac Mini in that time, and I've put all of that into this, well, what is now a very simple buying guide. Just before we get started, we've noticed that 87% of the people who watch this channel regularly haven't subscribed, so if that's you, just give it a little click, please. It makes a massive difference, and if you've just found me, I know I need to earn that click. So let's see if by the end of this video, you fancy subscribing. Hopefully, you will. Let's start with the chip because you can make some very big mistakes here. So there's two chips to choose from. You have the M4 and the M4 Pro, which I have in here. And there's three configurations, which we'll put down here. So the M4, the standard one, has one configuration and the M4 Pro has two configurations. Lots of numbers, lots of cores and stuff going on. In terms of the difference between the M4 and the M4 Pro, generally speaking, most of the benchmarks and stuff suggest that you can get up to 50% better performance from the M4 Pro over the standard M4. M4. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is, but it's only for specific use cases, and it's if you're really pushing your Mac. If you are really doing lots of intensive audio, video, coding, whatever it might be, you may see up to 50% improvement on the M4 Pro. For most other people, including myself, you won't notice anything. The reason I know this is because I did a Final Cut Pro test where I take a 10 minute 4K video from Final Cut Pro and export it to a MOV file. I did that on both the standard Mac Mini and my spec'd up M4 Pro version and the standard M4 version did it in three minutes and 38 seconds, which is very fast and it's quicker than my spec'd up M3 Max MacBook Pro, which is amazing. However, it was only 10 seconds slower than the M4 Pro version. So basically by spending an awful lot more money on this, I saved myself 10 seconds on a Final Cut Pro export. That says everything you need to know about these chips. If these numbers down here, bring them up again, if these cores and stuff don't make any sense to you whatsoever, just buy the base model. The only other difference between the M4 and the M4 Pro is the port situation. So they both have the same USB-C ports on the front, but on the back, the standard M4 has Thunderbolt 4, whereas the M4 Pro has Thunderbolt 5. Now, Thunderbolt 5 is a lot quicker, but equally, it's quite a nascent technology there aren't that many Thunderbolt 5 things you can buy. You know, there's graphics cards and I think there's one or two SSDs, yeah, external drives, but they're very expensive and there's not very many of them. So again, if you don't know what Thunderbolt 5 is, just get the base model. Memory and storage. So the base model M4 Mac Mini comes with 16 gig of unified memory and a 256 gig SSD. That costs 599 in both the UK and US, which is bonkers money in a good way for a very, very capable Mac that will last you a very long time. Now you can increase the memory and you can increase the storage as well, which we'll put down here, the options that you have for that. As you can see, each of them adds about 200 pounds or $200 for each increment, and you can just get what you need. It's as simple as that. If you need more than that, the M4 Pro starts at 24 gig of unified memory and 512 gig of SSD storage, and it starts at 1,399 pounds, same in US dollars. Again. That's, a, that's a, not very much money at all for a very, very powerful Mac. But if you want, you can take the unified memory up to 64 gig 
And if you fancy selling one of your children or remortgaging the house, you can go up to eight terabytes of storage. The other thing you can do is add 10 gigabit ethernet for 100 pounds or $100. I did that to this one, but I, basically I only did it because Patrick Rambles did. And I can't have him having a better Mac Mini than me. So unified memory, 16 gig is perfect for most people. If you know you need more memory, you know you need more memory. If you need 64 gig, then you have to get the M4 Pro. That's quite straightforward. When it comes to internal storage, I would go for the 512 option. I think the 256 gig, it's a little bit measly, really. I think you, if you've got half a terabyte in there, you've got a bit more space for apps and that sort of stuff. And then you can just add external storage afterwards. Very straightforward. If you want more more than two terabytes, get the M4 Pro. But again, for most people, that base model with 16 gig and the 512 gig storage option is the one to go for. But you do need some more stuff. Starting with today's sponsor, which is RoboForm. RoboForm is basically the most affordable and feature-rich password manager I've ever found. If you're still keeping your passwords in your head or on a spreadsheet, or worse still, you use the same password for everything, you need RoboForm. It's basically a secure vault that you throw all of your digital stuff into that you want to keep safe. They've got a no-breach history, so it is completely safe, but yeah, all of your logins, anything you want to keep away from prying eyes. It's got a one-click login feature, which does exactly what it says on the tin you just choose the website you want to log into and bang you're straight in you can share passwords very securely with friends and family and colleagues there's an emergency access feature so if the worst happens for whatever reason and you can't access your password vault you have someone designated who can do that and it's compatible with all of your devices so android ios mac windows the whole lot it's so easy to use and it saves loads of time if you need a new password setting up it does so in seconds and the password is absolutely bulletproof if you if you're not using a password manager, you need to get on RoboForm. And the best news is I've got a fantastic deal for you. Just click that link in the description. You'll need a keyboard as well. And I have gone back to the magic keyboard. I've ditched my mechanical keyboards for now because for some reason I've just fallen in love with the Apple magic keyboard once again. But if you do fancy a clicky mechanical keyboard, I recommend either Newfy or Keychron. We will put some links in the description so you can go and check them out. In terms of a mouse, just get the Logitech MX Master 3S. It's the best mouse ever made. In terms of a monitor, I am using the very expensive Apple Studio Display, but you don't need to do that. I personally recommend the BenQ PD3220U. Again, we'll put a link down below so you can go and check it out, but it's much cheaper than the Studio Display. When it comes to headphones, I'm using the Sony XM5s as my noise cancelling headphones. If you want the best noise cancelling and you don't take those headphones away from your desk, just get the Sony's. If you take them away from your desk, get the Bose QC45s instead because the case is better. In terms of production headphones, I use the Sony MDR MV1. They're very good for audio and video production. There's no SD card slot on here, which is really annoying, which does probably mean that you're going to need some kind of dock. I'll put two options down below. One is by CalDigit, which is expensive, but very, very good. The other one is a hub that you basically put the M4 Mac Mini on top of and it looks very nice and it's a bit cheaper. When it comes to external storage, we still use SanDisk. I know it's not the most popular option, but for five years, touch wood, it's never let me down. Oh, and if you need a standing desk, get that Vernal desk. It is amazing. Some lingering questions you might have. Firstly, should you get an iMac instead? Well, the iMac is lovely and you can get an M4 iMac, but you can't get an M4 Pro iMac. So if you've decided pretty much on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, you have to get the Mac Mini. And equally, the iMac's a bit restrictive because although it's a lovely display, it's the only display that you get with the iMac. It's built into the computer, whereas this, is such a good starting point. You can add anything to this, a massive monitor, you know, the best keyboard you can find. We can do that with the iMac, but you get the point. The Mac mini is a perfect starting point and it's cheaper than the iMac. Then you might think, should I get a MacBook instead? You know, a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro? If you need portability, yeah. If you don't need portability, get this. Then you might think, what about the Mac Studio? Now, at the time of filming this video, we don't have an M4 Mac Studio. By the time that you watch this video, it might exist. But regardless, the Mac Studio is a very niche computer. You know if you need a Mac Studio. And in fact, if you need a Mac Studio, you're not watching this video. And then you might think, what about the M2 Mac Mini? Why not just buy that instead and save a bit of money? And to be honest, if you're not bothered about this new design, if you're not bothered about the front-facing ports, and if you're not bothered about the M4 chip, just get the 
M2 Mac Mini. It's still an amazing computer. We have an M2 Pro Mac Mini in this studio and it's wonderful. I didn't need to buy this. So with all that said, the one recommendation, the one spec that I keep coming back to with the M4 Mac Mini is the base model with 16 gig of unified memory and a 512 gig SSD. That's it. That will set you back £799 or $799, which is an amazing price for a Mac. Now it's over to you. Which Mac Mini are you going to buy and what are you going to do with it? I'd love to know. Get involved in the comments. If I've earned that subscribe click, thank you very much. And if you've still got some time and you want to hear about my M4 Pro Mac Mini setup, which is over there, keep watching for a link.